I became the hero who banished the protagonist chapter, Where Are You? A life of murder, Marion's life was filled with blood. Every time the tip of her spear pierced someone's lungs, she felt the life being snuffed out of them. Bishop and Dre had told her not to overthink about it, so she chose not to, for all she did was follow the bishops, and therefore the Puritans, orders, you called, Bishop, Marion answered the call and stood behind Bishop and Dre on a summer night when the grasshopper's buzzing was loud, he was sitting on a pew in the church, exhaling the smoke from his cigarette, in recent years, there have been no larger scale heresies that would require a large number of inquisitors however, she wondered if that would change today. Sit over there for a moment, Andre gestured to a chair across from him, as Marion obediently sat down, he extinguished his cigarette, put it in the ashtray, and then turned to her, I have a new assignment for you, I'm at your command, Andre looked at Marion, the corner of his mouth quirking up, you must be curious about the mission it'll give you, no, all I need to do is to accomplish it, Andre let out a small laugh and leaned back in his chair, this mission has nothing to do with hunting down heretics, it will be a long-term mission and a potentially dangerous one, you may have to risk your life, Marion sat as still as a stone. Uh, since when did I give safe missions, Andre muttered and rose to his feet, in thinking of sending you to the Hera's party, Iris the Saintess has been forced to withdraw from the party, in sending you to fill the void for now, Marion nodded, very faintly hesitant, is there anything you wish to ask, no, just do as you're told, when you're told, how you're told to, Marion had no reason to question his orders, Andre turned on his heel and strode to a corner of the church, I have a new weapon to lend you, he picked up a cloth wrapped spear from a table in the corner and handed it to Marion, at first glance, it was an unremarkable weapon, Marion's expression changed slightly in confusion for the first time, Andre grinned in amusement, that's the holy spear, it hasn't found a suitable owner for a while so I wasn't sure who to give it to so I decided to lend it to you this time instead of letting it rot in the warehouse, is that so? Marion replied as she unwrapped the cloth around the spear, as it unwound, the spear began to glow with holy manna, Marion stared at the spear with emotionless eyes, I've warned him well enough, he'll make a scene if he finds out later. So he'll take refuge in the chaos kingdom for now, Andre's way of referring to the Pope could send believers into chaos, he looked at Marion and nodded solemnly, you'll need it if you're going to be a part of the Hera's party, you'll face battles you've never faced before so be prepared for anything, a different battle, Marion didn't know what that meant, looking at the bishop's gentle smile, Marion nodded, it had been five days since Elroy had entered the mist, Marion found herself in his room, not hers, pulling her knees together in the corner of the chilly bed, Marion blew a cold breath, she didn't want to go outside. She didn't even bother to eat, light came in through the window, darkness, then light again, hero, Marion looked at the compass at her feet, the compass had been hovering in the same place, pendulum swinging, pointing to the same place for days, and its motionlessness was unsettling her, the needle would twitch slightly every hour, filling the noiseless room, then it would stop again, what's going on? Is Elroy okay? What am I doing here? Marion hovered her finger over the compass. The atmosphere in the palace was quiet, subdued. Everyone waited anxiously for news of the hero. No one went to wait at the entrance of the fog, for it would be far easier to forget about him than to wait for him. A knock was made on the door of the room. It opened, and Marion saw Jork standing in the doorway with a plate of food. You've been sitting like that, too, Jork sighed stepped into the room, and set the plate on the desk, Marion glanced at the steaming plate, then turned her attention back to the compass, Daphne has been reading the book of Maccabees for days now, her eyes were red and she might faint from exhaustion soon, you also look the same, Jorg gently placed the cutlery on the table, Elroy wouldn't want you to be so worried, Jorg set down a glass of water next to the plate, Head want us to believe in him and wait for him, just like we did when he rushed to save Archduke Quinner, Jorg said self-deprecatingly, he even left us behind then Jorg pulled Elroy's letter from his pocket and shook it, my best bet now is to trust him and wait for him, it's the only way I can repay him for the loyalty he's shown me and the only way I can help the hero trying to save the world, Jorg patted Elroy's chair and walked back to the door, 
eat your meal and wait. It won't do Elroy any good to hear that you and Daphne have been starving in his absence. The door closed with Jorg's words. Marion buried her face in her knees again. Thank you, Marion, for protecting our castle then. For the first time, Marion realized she was fighting a different battle. It was when Karen, with an embarrassed blush, thanked the members of the Hera's party one by one. It was a fight where she didn't kill anyone. Marion looked down at her hands as the realization hit her. There was no human blood on her hands. There was no groan of hatred and contempt filling her ears. Yes, we did it together. Marion turned her head to see Elroy sitting in a wheelchair. It was the first smile she'd ever seen on his face. It wasn't the nervous, awkward, or bitter smile he always did. It was a proud smile from the purest joy that excluded all other emotions. Is that so? The answer Elroy said made Marion's heart skip a beat. It was a sensation she didn't want to miss. She didn't understand why the hero's pride struck her so firmly. Was it because he was running towards something so different from her? Or was it because of the noble goals he was after or be right back? Maybe it was because he had the eyes of someone who could vanish at a moment's notice, showing her light and warmth and then disappearing like a piece of tinder. What's wrong? Alroy looked at Marion, and she shook her head. Take good care of yourself. Elroy's eyes narrowed, and he looked down at his wheelchair-bound body and smirked. Thanks for the concern. As you saw, Marion is one of our strongest inquisitors. She is a great asset to us and will play an important role in rounding up the heretics. The bishop wants her to kill heretics again. Marion had to do as she was told. The Holy Land saved her life, and it was theirs to keep. Elroy was different from them. He saved someone and then walked away unwilling to calculate the cost. Even if he suffered, there's too little information for me to decide right now so give me some time to think about it. If a sacrifice had to be made, he would be the first to throw himself, unwilling to let anyone get hurt. Sacrifice. Marion was starting to hate the word. Marion staggered out of her seat, grabbing the compass. She couldn't follow Elroy's command to sit and wait. She would find him, grab him, and tell him one thing. Don't leave, if you want to sacrifice yourself, let us at least carry some of the burden. Marion picked up the holy spear leaning against the wall. She circulated mana through her body to gather strength, tucking the compass in her arms. Marion left the building, total darkness enveloped the world. There was only one destination in her mind. Step by step, she made her way toward the ominous presence of the fog. Why are you here? Marion came face to face with an unexpected figure. I thought some fool might try to break Elroy's orders and enter the mist but your manner has been flowing uncontrollably. Daphne spoke in a hoarse voice as she stood alongside paladins of the Holy Land. It seemed to be the after effects of sitting in her room alone and crying non-stop. Her hair was disheveled, and her face, like Marion's, was haggard from not eating and sleeping well. Go home, Marion. We haven't even gotten to the deadline Elroy promised, and if you go in there now, you'll only interfere with his task. Marion pursed her lips. Do you believe he's fine? I have faith in him. Marion lowered her holy spear and clenched it. He's going to need help. I'm holding myself back as it's the only thing I can do. Daphne said in a pained voice, her face contorting. Again, tears filled her violet eyes. If I step in there I'm afraid it'll be a distraction to him. A nuisance. If Elroy thinks of me like that Daphne looked at Marion with determined eyes, drawing on her manner, I can't let you in. Marion, you can call me a coward but I can't do anything that might stand in Elroy's path. Marion gripped the holy spear with both hands, golden energy coursed through her body and swirled at her feet. Why can't you listen? Daphne's tear-filled eyes sparkled in the light of her magic. Marion pointed her spear at her, feeling the pressure, now much more potent, I can't let you enter, 